Byron from Politics and Fashion, and welcome to the Mexico City vlog. Now, you would have seen that my last vlog, I was in Miami for White Toenail Season Weekend, and I decided to hop on a flight from Miami and come down to Mexico City. It was a short trip. I've always wanted to come. The tickets were not as ridiculous as some of the other airfare right now in the country. And I just decided to treat myself and to do something a little bit different. Um, Y'all know I love Tulum. I've been to Cancun, to Cozumel, but I also want to explore other parts of Mexico as well, especially because my family is in Florida, all over the state. And as I go to visit them, I can always kind of add on a trip to somewhere in Latin America, Mexico specifically. And so today I got in around, um, I think 10.30, or actually it was 9.30 because I'm in Central Time, um, was able to come through, you know, customs. It wasn't a very long process. No one was in line. And I packed in a carry-on, so that was even better. Uh, was in and out the airport so quickly. And I caught a taxi to my Airbnb. The taxi ride was um, about 45 minutes just because of traffic. If you don't know everything I have heard and experienced this morning, Mexico City is very congested. It is the most populated city, I think, in the world, if not one of the most populated cities. Um, but nevertheless, my uh, Airbnb is in a neighborhood called Roma. And so uh, it is very walkable. It is giving me... Um, New York City, if it was green, right? Like you have kind of this element of like a very organic vibe. It doesn't feel pristine or like well manicured, like a suburb. It feels like a city, but it also feels like a well-maintained city. And I love the plush green everywhere. And so I set out um, at a cafe. Actually, I visited two cafes. <laughs> Started at one and then went to another because I did have about a three hour gap before I could check into my Airbnb. And unfortunately I couldn't go explore because I had work to do. So I had breakfast at one cafe, lunch at another, took some consulting calls, posted, did all the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. If you all are new here, you may not know that my brand Politics and Fashion has the name because on the politics side, I do quite a bit of organizational coaching and consulting. And on the fashion side, well, you're watching it, friend. <laughs> I create content, okay? Um, so I had work to do, got that done, and probably around 3.30, well, I could check in at 3. And around 3.30, I went ahead and made my way to the Airbnb. The dope part about it is that I have heard a lot about Mexico being very noisy. Again, it is highly populated. But the dope part about this Airbnb is that it is in an alley. It wasn't suspicious at all. Just <laughs> it's in an alley. And uh, they provide lock boxes. You come in through a courtyard. And the unit that I am in, the apartment that I'm in, is in the back of the courtyard. And so I literally hear no noise from the street. A little noise from the neighbor, but nothing that I'm sure is going to keep me up at night. And I have been praying about that. Um, the Airbnb is a vibe. It's a whole vibe, y'all. I'm telling you right now. I am so impressed. And I have had good and equally bad Airbnb experiences. This is a good one. Um, the courtyard is lovely. It's so plush. It's so green. There is a unit that's right in front of me. And as I came in, they were like working from home with the doors open. The climate here is very moderate. And so no AC and everyone just kind of keeps their windows or their doors open. Um, came into my apartment and it's decorated so gorgeously. Like this is the style home that I want, that I deserve, okay? And I feel like when people in the States try to replicate this kind of style, where it's very cultural and, you know, you have your different colors and your aesthetics, it ends up just looking like you bought everything from Target because you probably did or like you went to World Market to try to give it that finesse. No shade against either one of those things, but you know, there is the prototype and then there are the other girls, okay? I'm just saying. And so this is giving authentic. This is giving authentic Mexican architecture, the beams in the ceiling, the tiles on the floor. I am most certainly here for it. Uh, and so it also has this really special little kind of square courtyard where you can see all the way up to the sky. I think this building probably has like three floors. And so that's really dope. I'm sure I'll probably sit out there at some point tomorrow. Um, the kitchen is so lovely. They actually had some fresh bread out for me. Girl, that bread was so daggone good. It tasted like 
it had been prepared by magical elves. Now, I was also a little peckish. I'm not going to lie. So that may be informing my opinion. But at the same time, it was sweet, but not a pastry. And when you can do bread like that, I'm here for it. And it was super soft. Anyway, enough about the bread. Um, So they had some fresh bread out for me. And girl, I opened the fridge and they had two Coronas. They had two beers. You know this not tea. You know this not tea. And I thought that little personal touch was so important. Uh, and then you go down a hallway, you have your bathroom to the right, to the left is the bedroom. And uh, I opened the door and had another really special surprise. They had um, a tea kettle and a cup and two tea bags waiting for me. And uh, again, it has been so peaceful. I took a shower, tried to get some of just the day off of me since I have been outside all day. Mexico is still wearing masks, and of course I will abide by that. Uh, so I'm not gonna be wearing probably much makeup on this trip. I'm just kind of put my brows on, put on a lip. This one is called Mean Girl by Dope Queen Cosmetics, which is a black owned brand. And I'll show you the OOTD before I go out and explore. I'm wearing a pair of Sunnies. These have a retro vibe. They are from Free People. My earrings in the front hole are from Madewell. Both necklaces were a gift. Don't know where those are from, but my duster is from Dior. It's actually a robe, but I kind of wear it as a cardigan. My jeans are the Margellas with the slits on the side and my crop top is from Aritzia. Shoes are from H&M and my pink lip is from a black owned brand. It is called Dope Queen Cosmetics and the color is called Mean Girl. Oh, don't forget my bag. This is the Valentino vanity bag and that is today's dinner OOTD. Mexico City vlog. I have made myself some tea. I have done my journaling and my meditation and also had some of that good delicious bread I was telling y'all about yesterday. It's just going to be carb overload the entire time I'm here. So I may need to like log into the Peloton app and get me a little, a little Pilates something, something going. Um, but anyway, let's catch up. Yesterday, y'all know that I arrived. I gave you a tour of the Airbnb. Um, I did some work and then we went out. Um, after the rain, it finally slowed down. The weather here kind of reminds me of back home. I'm from Central Florida, where you get those kind of short but intense bursts of rain this time of year. And so it rained really, really hard for like 15 minutes, stopped for an hour and then rained again and then stopped. So on that little break of the rain, I decided to walk around to um, the neighborhood that I'm in. The neighborhood, I don't know if I told y'all, is called Roma Norte, so North Roma. Um, and this is an area that a lot of expats live in, talk about. As a matter of fact, when I went to a coffee shop yesterday, I heard all different languages, race, all different racists, <laughs> racists. <laughs> very diverse is what I'm trying to say okay I'm only drinking tea I have not had coffee so please excuse me and uh, <clears throat> so I think what I have been hearing is true so there's Roma Norte there is Juarez and there's Polanco these are the three kind of hip neighborhoods that you tend to hear the most about not at all to take away from the rest of Mexico City but again as an expat as a tourist those are the areas you hear the most about. So I will be hitting all of those while I'm here. Um, we'll do some more walking throughout my neighborhood today, but I also want to go to a museum. So I think that's what's on the agenda for today. And I also will probably hit up Polanco because that's where all of like the shopping is. I've done good. Um, since I've been traveling, I picked up like, I don't know, two things from H&M that I needed when I was in Vermont. 
And then I went from Vermont to Miami. I got my Fendi slides. But now that I'm in Mexico City, we gotta go to Hermes. Because I feel like in a different country, you never know what that Hermes is hidden on. So we're gonna go check that out, see what else we can get into after the museum. Um, and tonight I will go to dinner. Oh, oh my gosh, I forgot to tell y'all. Dinner last night, baby girl. <laughs> girl. The restaurant was called Filadina. And <clears throat> what I love about this neighborhood is I had a hard time choosing where to go to dinner. It was literally like every 400 feet was a restaurant and was a restaurant that was more of a vibe than the previous one. Like everything was just, it was just vibey. <laughs> I don't, candles were lit. Okay, the rain had stopped, so it was a little kind of like dewy. Come here with your bae. Come here with your bae. I'm telling you right now, you will not be disappointed. So I settled on the Filipina. Um, I had an amazing cocktail to start. Um, and then after the cocktail, I think the cocktail had like rose liqueur and passion fruit and mezcal maybe. So after that, um, I really wasn't that hungry. I just kind of wanted to people watch. I had a tomato salad with like fresh mint and herbs. Girl, why they put goat cheese ice cream on it? They put goat cheese ice cream. Hear what I'm saying to you. Goat cheese ice cream on the salad, on the ensalada. I said, whoa. At this point, don't you ever bring me a salad again unless it has goat cheese ice cream on it because my bougie level has gone up. That was delicious, needless to say. Then I had flan, um, it was homemade, and I had never had like true flan. So usually the flan that I have had has been like pre-packaged, syrupy sweet, not at all what this was whatsoever. The texture was much softer, it wasn't kind of rubbery, it was good. Um, and then I finished with a glass of Chardonnay and caught an Uber back here. I should say that my meal total was $35, and I'm sure just for basically a salad, two drinks, and a dessert at that kind of ambiance of a restaurant in the States would have been at least $100. So I was very pleased with that. Came home, girl, and I knocked out. My little sister called me, and um, it was probably like 9.30. She's like, are you asleep? Yes, I'm, I am. I've probably not gotten more than 15 hours of sleep in the past seven days, and so prior to last night. Um, so I needed that. And part of this trip would just honestly be about rest as well. But enough talking, girl. Let's get out here into creation. So here's today's OOTD. I am going to wear my Prada crop top. I am going to wear my Totem high-waisted white linen blend trousers. And I am going to wear my Understands Zoe nude bra. This part of the vlog is sponsored by my friends over at Understands. In case you don't know, Understands is a woman-owned company based out of Canada. They are both size inclusive and they really pride themselves on diversity in all of their models and their images. Y'all know I love me a good mission-driven organization and all of their pieces are high quality. I've talked to you about Understands bras and panties here and over on Instagram. And I am so excited to include them in today's vlog because I wanna show you all what the Zoe Flex Wire bra does in your skin tone, whatever your new is. If you are a brown girl or a brown person like me, then you know it can be really hard to find our shade of nude. Nude comes in this color as the lightest and maybe mm, this color as the darkest. Maybe, okay? Understands has taken us throughout the hue, the color spectrum, okay? And the color I am wearing that I showed you all is called Mocha. I'm wearing a 34 double D. Also, once again, size inclusive. And so, this Prada top that you see, y'all, can be a bit sheer, depending on what I wear underneath. Like, it would be totally see-through as far as the white panels are concerned if I wasn't wearing something to protect and cover the nipples, okay? And so, the bra, even though it has the lace detailing, it still is smooth, and you can't see my bra, okay? So, it is invisible. It is truly a black girl's nude, and I love it. It's also super comfortable. Pro tip here, when you are purchasing your bras, purchase them as tight as you possibly can on the first ring or the first prongs uh, in order for your bra to expand over time because, of course, it is elastic along the back. If you want to know more about that, then check out my undergarments video, which I will link down below. But in the meantime, make sure you are supporting a woman-owned business. Like Understands, you can do so using my code, Tashira15. 
Now let's get out of here. Welcome to day three of the Mexico City vlog. Let me fill you in on what happened yesterday. The last time I saw y'all, I was leaving the house to go check out the popular art museum. Uh, definitely made my way over there and was just enthralled. I really, really was. I didn't have as much time as I would have wanted. However, when I got there, it is over three floors and then the main floor has um, a gift shop. And I started at the very top and just, fell in love with Mexican art, but specifically like folk art. It just reminded me of how much, if you give me a good like pottery piece, a good vase, a good, you know, tea set, any of those elements that you use for day-to-day -day life from different cultures, I'm just gonna go up for. It, it is just such an interesting, I think, um, example and peek into other cultures in their day-to-day -day lives. And so uh, that was really nice. That I think was on the third floor. And then as you come down, there were different types of art. What I really loved the most probably were the large embroidered pieces. I love to get up really, really close to artwork and to figure out how was this created? Like, it's always a level of detail for me. And so to see some of those massive tapestries that were all hand embroidered blew my mind because I just thought to myself, how long would it have taken someone to create something like this? And just these very minute details. Anyway, um, also was able to see a lot of like the indigenous um, textiles and fashion pieces. Uh, there was one piece where it was like almost a gold breastplate, like it was a huge gold necklace that came all the way down it. I said, I need that. All the jewelry actually was fantastic that I saw. Um, again, y'all know I like very bold, chunky, organic pieces. And so it was definitely inspirational from that perspective. After the museum, I headed out to really go get dinner. I was going to this restaurant that my Airbnb host recommended and I just stumbled upon Chinatown, which was a vibe. It was bustling. And everybody just had all of these like little interesting tchotchkes and the street food. It, it was just, it was everything. And my mom keeps telling me not to eat the street food, but I'm like, I'm not coming to Mexico and not eating street food. Like that's what it's known for. I'll take a probiotic. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'll be fine, okay? Um, and so I didn't eat there, although I did wanna come back by for dessert, that was the plan. Um, and left there, kept walking, and actually the restaurant that I went to was in the historic center, which is this very vibrant part of town. It was a lot of people there, it's shopping there, it's restaurants there, there was a Zara and Old Navy, plus a lot of different local shops as well. I stopped by Mac, got me a new red lipstick. And so it felt like this really nice kind of balance of the things that I'm familiar with mixed with, with the things that are new to me and are part of a different culture. So that was dope. And then the restaurant that I ate at was actually on the rooftop. So it was a nice view. It was on a terrace. I kept my meal pretty light um, because for lunch I had had 
girl. I had a quesadilla that changed my life. Just a couple blocks down, I went to one of the nice senors on the corner and got me a carne quesadilla. And I realized that I have never had a quesadilla in my life. If that is what a quesadilla is, I've never, I've never actually had one. I can eat it every day. I'm gonna go get me one today as a matter of fact. But anyway, um, so by the time I got to lunch, I wasn't that, or to, I guess an early dinner, I wasn't that hungry. Um, so instead I just had me a great cocktail. Um, it was this like two layered cocktail made with vodka and like fresh watermelon. I don't even know what the blue thing was, maybe some kind of like cura, is it called curacao? It could have been hypnotic for all I care. I just know it was delicious, okay? Um, and I enjoyed the vibe up there. Enjoyed the vibe up there. Um, and then probably around seven or eight, ended up doing a little bit more walking through town and hopped in a cab and made my way back to the Airbnb. Now, let me just say, people say that Mexico City traffic is really, really bad, like horrible. And I recognized that last night. When I went to... The museum, I took a cab as well. It was fine, a little bit of traffic, but nothing like out of the ordinary. On my way back, it took me twice as long and the cab driver was unwell. When I tell you he was cutting people, he almost hit someone, <sighs> running red lights. And I'm not from here, but I'm pretty sure that a red light is a universal signal for stop. He literally was flashing people with his lights and he was honking the horn the entire time. It had my nerves so bad, girl. I had to stop by the, the, the local hacienda and get me a, a six pack of Corona. I did because I said, <laughs> people are like, be safe, be careful, blah, blah, blah. They're thinking like, you know, something, something could happen to me on the street. I might get robbed, mugged, et cetera. But no, dog, it's, it's the traffic that will take you out. And, and these local cab drivers. So I will stick to an Uber for the rest of my trip here. Um, because like I said, he was unwell and that was unsafe. And after I had my Corona, I laid down and went to sleep and had another night of really good rest. And so today I've already taken one call this morning and now I'm gonna leave and go to probably where I went yesterday for breakfast, y'all, because I need to get stable Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi in the Airbnb is actually consistent. It's just not consistently good. And there are certain things that I need to log into that for some reason, it's just taking too long to load. So I'm gonna leave and go to a little cafe for breakfast, Wi-Fi. And then after that, we are going shopping in Polanco. I really wanted to go to Frida's house today, but it's just sold out and it's sold out for the next few weeks. And so there are certain things that I want to do on this trip and take y'all with me that I probably won't be able to do because tickets, it's the pandemic and tickets are uh, required and are selling out weeks and weeks in advance. And so we'll experience that next time. But today, you know, a little shopping, a little Hermes visit, ain't never hurt nobody. Let's go. Quick update, I just left the mall with a little something. I got a top that I just could not leave there. It just wasn't gonna happen. Um, tried to look at some shoes, but didn't find anything in my size. Stopped by Hermes and found a pair of like espadrilles, actually men's, 
that are amazing and the price is phenomenal um i don't know more or less than in the states but the the price was definitely less than like a classic oran um but i'm gonna leave them because what i really need to start getting ready for y'all it's fashion week and that's what this top is for i know it's not until september but if you stay ready what what you what you don't have to do get ready boom honda a bbb so now i'm going to get some food a cocktail and let's see what this neighborhood spot is given Hey good people, this is day three of the Mexico vlog. Sorry that I didn't wrap things up yesterday. I will fill you in a little bit later. But today we have a special, special, special guest. I have found the one, the only, Rashida. Hey, hey, hey y'all. <laughs> Shida is an amazing content creator, business owner, all around supporting women to take career breaks. And I found her online and you know, just the way God works, we already were connected in a virtual space. So now we are connected in real life. And so we're gonna just float around. Right now we're at brunch, come along with us. Today is my last day in Mexico City. I know it is dark in here and that is because it's 5 a.m. I'm gathering my things and getting ready to head out to the airport. But before I leave, let me just recap what has been going on for the past couple of days. So last time I talked to you guys, I was in Polanco. I was shopping. I had gone to the Palacio, I think is how you pronounce it, which is their big luxury mall here. Um, and also shopped a bit along the main street. Um, that also has some luxury stores that specifically gone into Hermes. Saw a pair of espadrilles that I love. They were actually men's shoes. But at the end of the day, I decided to leave them. Y'all know how I am about not duplicating or like cannibalizing purchases. And since I just got the Fendi like chunky slides, I felt like another chunky shoe. I would style them both similarly. Two very different shoes. I asked all my girls from White Tone Nail Season. I was like, what y'all think? They were like, the shoes are so different, Shy. And I know they are, but in my mind, I would wear them similarly. Plus, before I spent that kind of money on a pair of shoes, I realized that I got Fashion Week coming up, y'all. I still may do Fashion Week or Swim Week in July in Miami, depending on what shows I get invited to. But at the very least, I got to get the drip ready for September. And so, we got to shop with intention. Uh, nevertheless, I went over to um, the Palacio and uh, I found their department store like at the top of the mall and just it felt like I was in a whole new world. I was just like the Sandro pieces were out of this world. I mean, they, they just had everything that you could think of. They had Bash, all these contemporary brands on top of luxury brands, um, accessible. Plus a lot of designers that I had never heard of, including a black shirt that I grabbed that definitely will be seen 
during fashion week at the very least um and so i did grab that was happy for a very unique piece um here's what i will say about all the neighborhoods that i have been in i didn't get a chance to go to juarez but i did um go to condesa since it's so close to romo Roma Norte, which is where I am, as well as Polanco. My vibe is definitely Condesa Roma Norte. I felt like Polanco, while it is the Beverly Hills, as some would say, of uh, Mexico City, it just felt a little bit too uppity for me. And I also was keenly aware of my blackness there. And I hadn't felt that way, that way anywhere else in Mexico City because the city is very diverse. But it was just different there. I kind of felt like you know how you just get the look? <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like I got a lot of the looks. Not to say I would never visit again. It's just not, if I had to rank the neighborhoods, it would not be my favorite. So came home, went to bed. Y'all have been going to bed so early. I, I have loved it, okay? Uh, went to bed early. The next morning, got up and just prayed, meditated, did my journaling, and floated around this Airbnb uh, singing Jill Scott in 90s R&B. <laughs> it was a full concert in this joint. They told me to sell tickets. You know, I believe in multiple streams of income. Um, and so that was um, a great time. And I'm happy that I really got a chance to enjoy this Airbnb. I showed you all um, in the beginning, like an Airbnb tour. It is, <clears throat> without a doubt, one of the most phenomenal places I've ever stayed. And so staying here and not just kind of rushing to do this excursion to do this and do that is what really helped me to enjoy this space which is what i needed it was very restorative um so then around noon i met up with rashida hey girl hey she the d over on instagram but she's also here on youtube i make sure i link her channel if you are someone who is interested in traveling abroad or moving abroad Rashida is somebody you need to know. Also financial literacy. I've gotten so much encouragement from her videos all around investing, how she retired at the age of 39. And so she helps black women to move abroad, to live anywhere in the world. And we talked yesterday and just realized that so much of this idea of living abroad is mindset, right? Like she's been in Mexico City off and on for three years. This is now her home. Um, and she talked about the myths that people often think. They think you're gonna get you know, abducted by the cartel. <laughs> They think that there are feral dogs walking the streets. As you all have seen, none of that is true. However, that is the mindset that especially many Americans bring to um, the idea of what it means to live in Mexico. Not to mention this idea of like American essentialism and believing that our country is the best in the world. And girl, it is the ghetto. I mean, just comparatively speaking, it, it really is. And so <laughs> the people here have been so nice and, you know, we just really compared soup to nuts, the different places that she's lived, the different places that she's traveled and why she decided to live in Mexico City specifically. And so I definitely recommend you check out her resources, her courses. She does amazing lives over on YouTube. I have a feeling that if you are following me or subscribed to this channel, you probably are also subscribed to her. But if not, head over there, girl. Run, don't walk. And so we started off with brunch at the Four Seasons. It was so cute. We met this really cool dude named Seth, who also lives abroad. He actually lives in Colombia. Uh, he is this, like design firm, guru, owner, entrepreneur. I don't know what he would call himself. All the things, child. Wealthy. That's what he is. Um, and so he lives in Colombia and yet someone else, another black person who lives abroad. So that was a great experience and conversation. I had a, a watermelon Aperol spritz, which was delicious. And then I had chicken flautas for lunch. Um, food and drink, 10 out of 10. Ambiance, girl, 11 out of 10, okay? You have got to stop by the Four Seasons if you come to Mexico City. As a matter of fact, girl, stay there. If, if your budget allows, stay there at least for one night. Um, and then we went across the street because she was like, well, I want you to see um, the rooftop at um, the Ritz. And I was like, okay, I'm just thinking like it's a normal rooftop. Sure, I'd love to go and get a view of the city. Girl, we get up there. We get up there. That panoramic view, they need to charge for it. They had, I mean, it was probably the highlight of my trip. Um, I had some sort of cocktail that had flowers pasted on the outside of it. I don't know what it was. It was orange and matched my shirt. It was great. Um, and we just sat there, chatted, kikied, talked more about business, and then met this lovely uh, mother-daughter duo who were also traveling and on a trip together. And so I think the theme of this trip 
has just been meeting great people. Even my neighbors at the Airbnb, they helped me out with something one day. They were very gracious, very kind. I, I pet their dogs. Like everyone here has been so nice. The waiters have given me recommendations, etc. And so after I left Rashida, I was going to go over to the Anthropology Museum. I actually did take an Uber over there. And once I realized that the line was out the door and around the corner and was not moving, I was like, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Came back here, took a nap, <laughs> woke up around nine and I packed and that was the day. And that is it. Thank y'all so much for spending this time in Mexico City with me. I'm outside. I'm outside all summer. I got a trip to New York planned very soon. I'll be somewhere else after that. Who knows? I will choose a destination in the world. Travel is one of my favorite things to do. And right now I'm in a season of healing and I really need it. So I will let you all know more about what's going on with me very soon. In the meantime, make sure you are following me over on Instagram and on TikTok for David Styles of Care Inspiration. And I will see you good people across the internet. Peace.